so hello everybody here we are with Plamen Panagiotov hi Plamen hi Plamen is a psychiatrist he's a chief psych uh, physician at the day clinic of Luce mental health center in Bulgaria uh, he's a chairman of the board of uh, solution brief therapy on counseling center in Russia and a lecturer in uh, all the world he traveled all the world teaching uh, solution focus therapy and brief therapy in general. Hi Plaman, how are you? Hi, very well, and you? I'm well, thank you. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. Okay, so um, the first question is about uh, um, this, about this, about simple okay. therapy. I okay. met um, Plamen uh, yeah, the last year for the first time at the um, HEBTA HBTA conference in, in Bulgaria, in Sofia, and it was uh, amazing to hear about your your method, the simple therapy or the QQ method. And so um, let's talk about that in general terms. Give us some um, uh, ideas about um, how it works. Okay, first of all, we were, me and my colleague and friend Boyan Strakhyov, we were literally, literally forced to do counseling, coaching, we don't call it therapy anymore, yeah. but any um, helping conversations, uh, we were forced to do it like this by our clients, because there were a number of clients uh, that refused, simply refused to answer our questions, no matter how wonderful we thought they were. Mm -hmm. And then it turned out that if we let the clients ask the questions and let them also give some answers to their questions with our help, therapy becomes really, really extremely brief very as useful as possible for clients and at the same time as joyful as possible for us mm. because i believe that uh, we professionals need to enjoy what we do while clients need to make use of whatever we talk with them about and then over the years we came to see some things that are very very often overlooked by professionals because from our point of view, therapy starts when clients enter our offices. From their point of view, it's very, very different. Mm. They have already asked before coming to us, totally independent of the therapeutic approach, totally independent of our professional background. Each and every client has already asked the first question, should I do this private issue that we have at our family or with myself, should I make it public? In Latin terms, uh, from private matter, res privata, to change it to res publica, mm -hmm. public issue. And then obviously they have given to themselves the answer yes, otherwise they wouldn't come. Then they ask the second question, who should I go to? And they make a study, a survey. They may ask their friends, relatives, colleagues. They may search the internet. They gather information about this question, who should I go to? And then they give a second answer. For example, I should go to Flavio or Plamen or anyone. Yeah. So they make a decision. They give an answer to a second question. And then they ask to us the third question from their point of view. And the first in our encounter with them, they pick up the phone and they ask, can I come, let's say on Wednesday at two o'clock, because this is the most convenient time for me. So they ask the first question to us and they also suggest an answer. It is not always possible to see them when, when they want. But uh, from this point of view, the active part 
in any therapeutic counseling coaching uh, conversation the active part is the client mm -hmm. i worked this for many many years and i cannot remember i cannot recall any single issue that i was searching for the client it is always they searching for us yeah maybe they were sent by somebody but this doesn't change the fact that we are actually the passive part we are invited by clients to join them for a little while that's why i like this idea of sim uh, uh, single session therapy because they usually try to keep it short yeah they don't want us to be too much engaged with their lives they need a number of answers to their own questions this is how i see today so when they enter the room they have already asked at least three questions and they have given at least two answers and one suggested when they should come. And we don't need to change the process. Because after the session, after the helping conversation, they will again ask a number of questions. Was this useful? What shall I do in the future? Do I need to repeat some of what we were talking? How am I going to use whatever I heard and what we talked about so in in between what already happened and what will happen after the session we have our session with them and uh, what we want to do is not change the process if they have started asking questions we want to continue with that and if they are able to give useful answers to their own questions, okay. If they are unable or unwilling, then it is our job either to ask a question or give an answer. This is how we see it most generally.